It's been about 18 months since we last drove this car. At the time, it was called the Scion IM. But of course, everyone knows Scion has been put to bed. So, Toyota kept the car, mostly kept the name. So today here on RumbleStrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive, we're gonna have a second look at what is now called the Toyota Corolla IM. travel going on. Uh, we only have a couple days with the Toyota Corolla IM here and we were curious to see does it still hold up to the fairly good impressions that we had on the car when we drove it back 18 months ago at its introduction. And generally yes it does hold up and it is a pretty good car. The problems and we'll put problems in air quotes come in the sense that it's a little bit older because this has been around in Europe for a few years and compared to what's out there now it's getting a little bit dated. Uh, the Honda Civic sticks, still sticks out to us as an amazing car uh, and value for money but we can't give it the total crown of value for money because one of the unique things about the Corolla IM is that it still holds a little bit of that Scion DNA in that it's sort of a one price kind of vehicle. The sticker price is the sticker price and there are no options. Now, we went online and looked to see, just to, just to see that uh, if you could change anything, but other than color and transmission, that's about it. There is an optional seven inch navigation but we couldn't select it when we tried to option this thing up so this comes in with delivery charges to your dealer MSRP at under $21,000 it's $20,000 and some change that is pretty good value for money let's let's be honest here that's very good value for money that is something that will be a you know 300 and some odd dollar car payment or I'm sure you can lease this thing at uh, well under $200 a month. And will you be happy with it? Generally, yes. This is certainly far superior to the current uh, four-door sedan version of the Toyota Corolla, just in overall refinement. Number one being that this has an independent rear suspension Number two, it's far more flexible because it is a five-door hatchback. And while we haven't had a chance to really use the full functionality of that five-door hatchback, uh, we'll roll in some pictures here and you can see that it's, it's a fairly good size once you put the back seat down. Now, minor complaint, you will have to adjust the front seats so that you can fold it down because the headrest in the back seats, they don't tuck in. So, I mean, that's a minor, minor inconvenience other competitors do have that tuck feature so that's why i say it's a you know it's a minor complaint minor inconvenience you know is it a, is it an issue with you probably not but we felt we needed to bring that up this is a very quiet car um and in that sense the refinement in here is very good it's a car that doesn't like being driven slowly when you're driving even in city traffic it wants to go at a speed faster than everyone else. On the highway, uh, you know, 85, 90 miles an hour in this thing, not a big deal. It's it's still fairly quiet. It's starting to turn some RPMs at that at that point, but it's not overall. It's not overly buzzy. Um, there's not a lot of road noise that comes up. So, from that standpoint, this is an excellent car. <laughs> The engine in here is a 1.8 liter four cylinder and we're don't I don't have my notes handy but 
off the top of my head, it's about 138 horsepower at 6,100 RPM and 126 foot-pounds at 4,000. So the power was way up there. And it's exaggerated by the fact that this is equipped with a CVT. Is this a constantly vexing transmission or continuously variable? Um, borderline vexing. Now this has simulated steps in the transmission, but overall it's a little, it still has that rubber bandy feel to it that many CVTs do. Good CVTs are usually put behind engines that have a lot of low end torque or to get a good CVT experience, you really need to have an engine that has a lot of low end torque. This obviously doesn't have it with a torque peak up at you know 4,000 RPM. It's not bad, but you know, given the choice, manual probably would be a better driving experience, but you know, maybe 15% of the people that buy this are actually gonna choose to go with the manual transmission. It's just a fact of life in this day and age. Fuel economy, pretty spot on. Um, again, don't have my notes quite handy, but it's, and we'll annotate for what the correct numbers are, but it's something like 28, uh, 28 combined, 36 on the highway. And those numbers are pretty much spot on. I think the city's like 22, 24. Again, we'll annotate it correctly. But we're seeing right about 28, 29 combined. And we did see 35 on the highway run that we did with this. And, you know, it's fine. It's, it's going to be very fuel efficient, very economical to run. One other item that is, we think, missing in this is even though that it's a cloth interior, and you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly solid material, is the lack of a heated seat. Now, we've had some typical Michigan weather where it's very warm one day and cold the next, and we're experiencing some of that cold right now. But even with the cloth seat, it would be nice to have a heated seat and there are others in the segment that do, even at the same price point. So that is an omission. It's not like it's, oh my God, you're sitting on leather in the cold, but even with cloth, you do notice not, not having any heated seats. Again, minor inconvenience, sure. But again, it's something that others at the same price point, in the same category, have a standard equipment. A lot of people who are going to be buying this car may be buying it for their kids, so they're concerned with safety. Well, this has the Toyota Star Suite in it, so it has uh, pre-collision with pedestrian avoidance. It has eight airbags. Uh, it has a lot of the Toyota Star safety systems. We can annotate some of that somewhere in here. It, it, it's a relatively safe car, so if you're buying it for your kids and you're worried about it, you know, it, you should be covered with... Uh, with most of the modern conveniences. So what's your opinion overall of the Toyota Corolla IM? In general, it's good. It is certainly something that should be on your list if you're shopping in this category. Uh, it's certainly miles better from our experience than the standard Toyota Corolla four-door sedan, as we said earlier. Uh, if you're looking at a Toyota in this, it, you know, in this area, you really need to choose the IM over the standard Corolla. It's a newer chassis, much more up-to-date, better ride, better, just better overall. You know, how does it stack up against uh, Hyundai and Honda and even the new uh, Chevy Cruze or Ford Focus? It can hold its own. You know, a lot of, lot of things in, at this point are gonna be personal preference of what you like. If we're choosing our favorite vehicle as far as value for money in this category the Honda Civic is probably going to be up there um, and the new Cruze is up there as well even though we really haven't had much time in it but if you want reliability and a great dealer network I mean it's going to be hard to beat Toyota other than maybe Honda right so you're not going to go wrong if you choose this understand from a driver's standpoint it's not a driver's car it's a commuter car, it's a functional daily driver car that feels more than an appliance, 
because it has a better quality. It doesn't feel throwaway or disposable. This is something that you can drive for 10 years and feel confident in. And that's what most people are looking for. If you stuck around to the end here and you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you the next time on rumblestrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive.